Hey guys, welcome back to another video in the series of shell scripting for beginners and in today's video we are going to talk about stream editor which is also known as set. Before moving further in, further in this video, you know the drill that if you are new over here and have not subscribed my channel yet, kindly do so. So without further ado, let us understand what a CT command or a stream editor is. Okay, so the topic that we are going to discuss today is what is a CD or said, usage of said, what is the syntax, what's the workflow, what are the standard options and we'll talk about the demo. So let's understand what exactly is a SED or a stream editor. So basically it performs editing operations on text coming from a file or from a standard output. When you talk about standard output, you mean you can do it from the terminal as well. SED edits line by line and in a non-interactive way. This means that you make all the editing decisions as you are calling the command and SED executes the directions automatically. This tutorial will cover some basic operations and introduce you to the syntax required to operate this editor. So we are going to take in demo and we are going to talk about a few things through which you will be able to understand. Okay, so let's talk about the usage part. So in usage, on my right, you can see there are three things that uh, that will explain you the workflow. So before usage, you need to know the workflow in which there are three things, read, execute, and display. In read, what we are doing is we are reading a line from the input stream. As you know, that SED will work on line by line. And then you have to execute it. So executes SED commands on a line and then display result on the output stream. And that's the workflow you need to understand and remember. So now in the usage part, SED performs text transformation on streams, substituting text from some other text. So you can give some other text and then it will substitute it or remove it or delete it. It can even remove the line which we are going to see in the demo part and then appending text before and after the given lines that you also you can do. It's a non-interactive editing of text file. Non-interactive means you have to write stuff and then after that it will not ask you anything. It will consume that command and then execute it one by one on the line. The syntax is three way over here. So the first thing is you have to start with S and then after that you have to give a search pattern that you are going to search in the, uh, in, in the file whatever you want to work with. And then you have to give a replacement over here and then the file name in which you have to do these operations. If you want to do for the ignore case if you have to find the pattern but you are not taking care of any lower case or upper case then you have to give I over here. This I can be capital or lower it does not matter. Now, if you have to search a pattern, there could be one line, one pattern, two line, two patterns, one line, three patterns. So at the occurrence, when you change it and you run your search pattern with the replacement, it will change at the first line or, or the first occurrence only of every line. But if there are three occurrences and you want to change it everywhere, then you have to use G which stands for global and for more than one occurrence. Okay, so I hope you guys have a fair idea now. Now let's start understand through the demo and move to the Visual Studio code. Let's talk about the replace first. And okay, I have created a lot of files over here which you can see name.txt like name.txt 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 like these and we'll be using in these programs. So let's understand replace. Okay, before moving further, I want you to test one thing. Go open your terminal and type sed hyphen hyphen version. Hit tab. And you can see if this is installed in your system, then it will work really fine. And if it is not installed, it means that you have to install it from the outside. It is easy steps. Uh, there are few few steps that you need to follow. Then you can find it online and you can Google about it. Okay. But if you have been following the way I have I have taught you this, then I think you already have a CD installed in your system. And let's move further. Let me clear this. Okay. So I have been telling you since quite a lot of time that about the access thing. So if I do ls hyphen ltr over here, you can see all of my files which I have created over here has now the right access. How you can give a right access? There are multiple ways, but what, what we are trying to do over here is we are going to change the files, write the files, execute the commands, and for that you need right access, sorry, execute access over here. So in order to give a right access, what you can do is let's just see this name 4.txt. Let me copy this name, do a shimod over here. Keep triple seven. Triple seven is the highest form of your privileges. Okay, it hasn't printed. Let me type again name 4.txt. 
you can just manipulate this first is read second is write and third is execute the numbers may vary but i am giving the highest privileges to show you enter now if i'll check this it will be having the new privileges and you can see it has the new privileges over here so i'm not talking about the name name txt files i'm talking about these files your shell files has to have the execute access in order to have the good results best results over here okay so if you have already done that because it might not show the result and there is one more way i was executing my commands like this 0 1 and tab like this okay once you give them moderator privileges you have to give like this you can even execute this is one another way of doing it you can do it like this 0 1 hit tab and you can enter it will execute the same thing okay so now let us understand what is happening over here if i go here so let me take this so this is my name.txt these are the five lines and these are the five lines over here now what exactly is happening over here so if i go and replace what it is doing is i know you already understood that s is the basic command that you have to use then search pattern actually a regex which is a regular expression and then here this is delimiter which is this now one more question is asked in the interviews that is it necessary to use this as a demulator no it is not necessary it is a basic step you can change it to hash or pound or something on different occasions but by default we can use this okay so this is the answer to the question we're talking about the name.txt now what is happening so if i do cat name.txt over here this is the file but what is happening what i'm doing is this is a text file which i'm which is actually a search pattern which i'm searching from here so this is a text file is on line number four and I'm changing it to this is, has been replaced by SED, which is this. And that's how it works, guys. Now, one more thing, pay attention. This is the only output. It is on the terminal. The original file has not been changed. How to change that, we'll talk about later. Right now, if you check the file, it will be as it is, which I showed you in the first place. This is a text file. And here it is just the SED output. It has not saved it, okay? So this is a very basic idea of how it works. I hope you guys have understood this part. Now let's talk about the next file, which is second case sensitive. In which file we are operating it? Same, name.txt. So what we are going to do over here is, we are going to check whether the logic ops lab, so this on logic ops lab, which is this in the file, and this is the file if I do, let's see, let's do the cat again. And you can see on logic ops lab is in a smaller form. So this is case sensitive. If I write I over here, capital or small does not matter. If I write I over here, it will ignore the case. So had it had it been like if I have not used this I, it would have given me some not not error, but it would have wouldn't have touched it. Okay. But here I have logic of slab written in uppercase, and I uh, there's a lot of code in my in in my script, and I, I do not remember where I have written it in uppercase, where I have written it lowercase. So what I'll do is I'll give I over here and it will touch everything if, 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 even if it's uppercase, even if it's lowercase, it does not matter. It will just replace it with on channel logic of slab. Okay. Let me just clear run this. No, not this. Yes. Let us run this this way. Okay. 0, 2, hit tab, enter. And you can see the third line is now on channel logic of slab irrespective of the fact that it is uppercase or lowercase. Why? Because I have used I and this will ignore it okay so i hope you have understood this part let's move on to the third program add i'm adding a new line in this so what i'm going to do i'm going to operate on name 2.3 so let me just clear this first and show you the file so name 2 hit tab enter you can say there is already a new line so what i'll do over here is i'll just remove this line this is the line right i'll just remove this from here save it and let's just run it so what I'll do is I'll just do sh02 hit tab enter and you can see it has shown this is a new line. Now this has shown only where over here. It has not saved it. We are not saving it. Okay. Wait. Just just a moment. I think I have ran the wrong one. sh03. I'll have to get a print of this tab. This is a new line. Now it has printed a new line. Now let's go to the file and you can see that it has printed this is a new line why why did it happen what i'm doing over here is i'm just asking it to add the line over here and uh, this is the wrong program this is the add now let us understand it again because that might be confusing what i'm doing over here is 
same thing search pattern regex delimiter same thing here i'm using this i'm trying to create a new file over here and this new file has a name name 2.txt which is adding this line so there is already an existing file in which we are adding this and if you use double then it adds a file so and if you use single it might truncate the file so do not use this until unless you deliberately want to do so so i'm adding a new line so if i go over here name 2.txt there is a new line let's run it again what happens again a new line has been saved so this is how what is happening i'm not saving it over here pay attention i'm not saving it over here i am just creating a new file from an existing file so that's why it's coming over here and the new file has an extra line which is like this and you can see this okay so i hope this part is clear i'm not saving it from this i'm just creating a new file from an existing file in which i have a new line like this okay so that's how it works guys now let's talk about the fourth program the fourth program is pattern match and it's going to work on name 2.txt so let me just clear this and show you what name.txt is name 2.txt okay so this have around how many seven lines i guess not not seven lines six lines and this is a new line this is a new line so let let us just delete a few lines over here and perfect let me run this again and you can see now there are only four lines okay so let's just clear it again so that it's not an issue perfect now what we'll do is we'll go to pattern match what i'm going to do over here is i'm going to match a pattern ravish with logic ops lab so wherever it's ravish it's going to print logic ops but it's going to print print on the first part first part means first occurrence this i'm giving g over here which is mean for global so every for every line so every line is a separate thing so one line one occurrence it will change no worries every line two occurrence no it will not change every line three occurrence or n occurrence it will not change but because of g it will be a global thing and it will change it everywhere and when you do when you want to want it at a specific thing you want you can do a third one okay so if i give a three over here let us understand so this is my program number zero four so let's do it if this way zero four now let us understand this so this is hello my name is logic ops so what it did it actually printed from logic from ravi shavat so this is the original file content and let's match everything from here so the original content what ravish 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 one line one occurrence second line one occurrence third line three occurrences of ravish what did the first one do first occurrence change second occurrence change third occurrence change but third sorry first occurrence first lines first occurrence second line first occurrence third line changed perfect second occurrence third line did it change no and for that what we have g which is global and if you see over here it will change everywhere first second first 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 second or third no matter how many occurrences are it will change it but if you want only at the third occurrence you can type three over here the number and it will change on the third occurrence which is this if you want to change at the second one so you have to give a name over sorry the occurrence over here save it and if i run it again you can see logic of shravat is on the second occurrence in the third line it runs line by lines pay attention it runs line by line first occurrence first occurrence first occurrence second occurrence third occurrence okay and that's how it works guys let me roll it back to 3 so that it's not confusing perfect let's go to the fifth program of today which is replace save new this is a bit confusing and if it's confusing for you i'll explain in the next one actually it's not confusing so let us understand this let me clear this it is operating on name 3.txt so let me do just cat for name 3.txt very basic two lines over here okay what i am doing is i am creating now this is the thing that you guys have to understand whatever uh, whatever happens sometimes what what we do is we create a file and then the original file is lost and we are very mad about it because there was some information and we cannot roll it back for that you can have it this option which is known as hyphen i dot backup this backup is the extension that you are giving if i type it bkp the file will be printed with bkp there should be no space between the dot and hyphen i should be the pretext what i am doing over here is it is changing ravish with logic ops but there is already logic ops so what we'll do is let's go to this file name 3.txt i'll type ravish over here cool control c control v 
save if i do cat again over here you can see ravish rawat same file change now perfect now there is no backup file over here just pay attention okay and then what we'll do we'll go over here the file number is name 3.txt and the program that we are going to run is 05 okay now let's see what happens so i'll just push it over here 05 sh 05 tab enter and you can say name 3.txt backup is created now this backup has the original file you can see this is the original one so it has printed over here and this is original over here okay now what will happen is let's just understand it it has replaced ravish with logic ops my name is logic ops logic ops shavat and it has created a backup file so backup file is originally this but now if i go to the original file it will show logic ops lab so what does that supposed to mean i'll do it again for you i'll just change my name over here ravish i'll give ravish again over here and then understand it save it this is my original file now and i'll delete the backup file i'll delete backup i'll just clear this i'll run this again and you can see it has changed the original file from Ra ravish to logic ops but then it has created a backup file which is the original file and that's how you take a backup so that you guys can work on it and then you not forget about it that what we have written is now gone okay so i hope you have understood this part this is the crux now let us understand replace save current okay this can come a bit confusing before going further you can always combine the std commands with a semicolon or a semicolon now here we are using this it will remove the blank lines this uh sometime call it power or tower thing or uh, tower sign and then pound or a hash remove black lines and this removes the lines when you combine both of them it matches the blank lines okay so this matches beginning of the line this matches end of the line both combined matches blank lines and then it will be deleted okay i am using d over here which will delete it okay now this uh, hash will match uh, that matches comments in the file that starts with hash okay now let us run it and see we are operating on name 4 so let me clear this and cat name 4.txt sorry my bad my file says has around like six lines with one space line over here okay so let's see how this works so it is sh 06 hit tab enter what it has done after the std command what it has done it has removed it has given only three things so what it has done it has deleted everything that has first occurrence of ravish so there is no ravish over here okay so original file content were this it has removed ravish ravish shavat so this has ravish this has ravish this has ravish so these all of these are deleted also this also is ravish so this four things are deleted now only file print, only printed is hello my name is logic of lag which is this and next it has printed hello which is this and that's how it works guys okay so these are the thing that it has run and has deleted in the name 4.txt and that's how you can use delete or d function now in terms of this it has given only hello because it has removed everything so it has removed everything so original file content is still here but here it has removed what what exactly let me let me just show you if i do the cat again sorry so this has removed the different part this can be confusing over here but let us understand in the next program how this exactly work in your scd i'll just close this and i'll just show you so let's go over here we were talking about this one right let us understand delete lines because if you read over here it won't be much more clear i have the perfect example over here so let me just clear this and understand let's go over here and what it exactly it is doing it is working on name 5.txt so let me just cat over here it name 5 hit tab enter and you can see there are multiple lines okay first line second line is blank third line fourth line is blank fifth line sixth line is blank seventh line is blank and eighth line is with hash it is going to remove that as well okay 
Now in the previous example, I did not have this. So that's why it was showing me some weird results. Here it will remove from this, this one will be removed. And from this, it will be removing these spaces and stuff. And let us understand how this works. So let me run this 07 tab enter after a CD command. So this was the original file content. Okay. Eight lines with four spaces and four lines basically. Now it has only three lines. What it has removed? It has removed through this, what this line, which is the comment. And through this, it has removed the spaces like this, like this, like this. And it has given the this. So I hope you guys have understood it. One more thing we have been combining SED in this, in the, in the last program, we have also combined it. You can do it this way as well. So two operations, one SED command, one line. Okay. So you can just combine this through a semicolon. But sometimes what happens is there are multiple commands that you have to write. So you cannot write every time and it make it, it's quite cumbersome. There is a solution for that as well. And for that, let's move on to the multiple lines, which is the last topic for today. Let's go over here. It is going to operate on which one? Name6.txt. So let me just clear this. And let's just cat name6. Hit tab. I'm sorry about that. Let me just clear this. Again, the same thing. Now what it will do is we are going to do same thing in three way. Again, I'm going to iterate this. This will remove the blank lines. This will remove the lines. This matches the beginning of the line. This matches the end of the line and both combined matches a blank line. So one does for blank lines and this is for blank lines. Okay. It matches the comment in the that starts with this. That's why it will remove. So I'm echoing two things, one before the SAD, uh, before, uh, one after the SAD command and one for the original file content. This is the original file content. And if I run this, how will it work? SH08 tab enter. So after SED, what I'm doing, I'm doing three operations over here. First is this operation, second operation, third operation. I'm doing what is what I'm doing is, so what is the original content? My name is logic ops lab for the file name, this and this. It is replacing logic ops lab with Ravish, which is this. I hope you guys have understood this part. What exactly this is doing over here? It is removing this in the output and you can see here it is, it's not there. And this is removing your this, this and this, and you can see there is nothing over here. So I hope you have understood it. This is one way of combine, combining SED with hyphen E. It is one of those things which is asked a lot in the interviews and they can ask you to write code as well. So I hope you guys have understood it. This can be quite intimidating, but if you'll practice, download my code or write your own code and run it, do not move from this video until unless you have mastered this, because this is one of the most important thing that is asked inside any sort of interview for SRE or for Linux or for shell scripting. And then you can move forward if you, if you, if you understand it. And there would be anything that you won't have understood. So you can clone my code, understand that then you can write your own code, pause it, play around it, then only move forward. Otherwise, this is one of the most important topic that will be skipped and you won't be in a good condition for when you, when you go for an interview. So guys, I hope you have understood this. And if there is anything, feel free to comment below and we will address that. So thanks guys. And I'll see you in the next video.